Hi, I'm Mike. Welcome to How We Do Disney. And this is Countdown to Disney, day 34. Now, what I want to do with these videos is, uh, you know, I, I can't predict how long they're going to be, uh, how involved they're going to be, but at least um, I don't know if I'm doing one every day until the day I get to Disney or every five days. And I basically came up with the idea at the point where there is 34 days before the day we leave for Disney. Uh, it is March 18th. Our trip is day one is, is April 21st. And now I'm just gonna kind of go through my head what exactly um, goes on through my head while now letting it sink in that we're, we're not far from a Disney vacation. Um, I guess the first thing to talk about very quickly is uh, we actually have change of plans. Uh, we never, I don't think we ever got into detail where our specific plans. Um, I think for the sake of, you know, the thing is, is when it comes to planning a Disney trip, what we like to do is we look at everything, we uh, take every possibility. Um, uh, as long as it's not too crazy. And, you know, first started with the resort. First, you know, first we started with All Star Music, then we moved to Port Orleans, French Quarters, uh, then we moved to Riverside. Then next was Art of Animation, but then our official plan, which hasn't changed, is we're going to uh, Pop Century, which we went a couple of years ago, uh, 2016 to be exact. You know, using the five steps of Disney, that's what we did. No one was choose what time of year to go, and we chose late April. It's right after spring break. Um, unfortunately, it's around the time of the marathon. You can't be perfect. Uh, it's tough to choose. These days, more than ever, it is tough to choose the perfect time to go to Disney. You get to throw a caution in the wind and, and at least choose what you feel is the best time. Um, <clears throat> And we went for a special occasion, which is part of our criteria of when, to, uh, where, and when to go. And it's my birthday. It, that's going to be April 27th. But we're also celebrating our 10th anniversary, which is later that year. Uh, step two is what resort to go to. We bounced from about 405. We ended with Pop Century. Uh, step three, park and non-park days. Uh, is when we choose when the rest. We also choose the intervals in which we do a park and non-park. First day we're there, we, you know, we fly in, we're not doing a park, we're going to Disney Springs. The next day we go to Magic Kingdom, then we have the next day off, the day after that is Epcot, then we have a rest day, next day of Magic Kingdom, a rest day, and flight day. Um, that gets dining reservations. Initially, we had Magic Kingdom of the two days, one day we were going to do Be Our Guest, another day we were going to do, the second day we were going to do Skipper Canteen. I don't know which was which. Um, Epcot is a Rosen Crown. Um, on one of our non park days, uh, we were going to Polynesian uh, Ohana's for breakfast, that's my wife's choice. And the last day, that full day and night that we're there at Disney, I last night, um, we're doing Boma, which is on my birthday, exactly that Friday. Um, we are just down to the non-park days reservations. That that allows us, and I think that's a good idea, because we got to kind of break away from the I want to do everything. Um, you fall into the trap if you get if you don't know what to do and you're trying to do everything, you're gonna burn yourself out. If you know what you're doing and you know what Disney has to offer like we do, you're gonna burn yourself out because you wanna do everything. But we can't, we're still gonna go to like a lot of resorts. Besides Pop Century, we're going to Boardwalk to get, you know, you know some, uh, a snack, a dessert. Boardwalk is right outside of Epcot. It's in the World Showcase. I think it's between France and the United Kingdom that is the International Gateway, which is basically the back entrance of Epcot. Um, we're going to Polynesian, that's the third one, and we're going to Animal Kingdom Lodge, which is the new one for us, and that's four. So we're basically going to four parks. But I think what a good idea is, you could do what you want, okay? If you want to have, you know, dining every day at every park you are, you're at, that's fine. 
we chose to, since we're going to do a lot of time in the Magic Kingdom both days in Epcot, we have it at our leisure. We don't have to be somewhere at a certain time. It's enough that our fast passes are dictating our day. So we're going to do it that way. Um, and so that is our park day. So that's the ch plans we changed. We changed some of the fast passes and we're only eating at Boma and Ohana's. Everywhere else is where the wind, wherever the wind blows, you know. Epcot, we get to go to food carts and eat at two or three different places to get our meal, or we can go to Sunshine Seasons, which is in the land pavilion in Future World. Question I have is, what is my plan for recording? Now, this is gonna be a subject I'm gonna repeat. But here's the situation. I have a normal camcorder, regular digital fan, uh, camcorder and I got my iPod and my iPad. Uh, I'll wrap up the day using the iPad. I'm bringing it with me whether I use it or not. Uh, the iPod is for filming a video, a video recording in the park and the camcorder but I have two devices to deal with. Now with the iPod it's easier to do and to download on, on YouTube or Facebook or Streamline. My camcorder is a different beast. And my patience, I will try again this a couple more weekends, trying to figure out how I can get my camcorder on my computer and use the, the same editing software I use for this, for YouTube videos. It's a lot more complicated, I don't know it. Um, that might take a while. So I wanna make sure, I think first and foremost, I want my iPod to have content that is ready to be aired. I'm gonna upload it to YouTube on private and release it every week uh, promptly, which will, you know, will be, again, have to schedule that out. As it comes for the videotape, a uh, video camera. I'm just gonna have to go as is and record like I usually do. The only problem is, is I have an iPod recording and I have the camera recording and my wife. So that's the planning. That's the second question is trying to figure out how I'm gonna plan it. I mean, I wrote it down on like pieces of you know, notes like this. You know, do I do, if anybody watches this video, I'm gonna pose this question in two different, in two or three different forms. One in the descriptions, one on this video. Is there any one of these things, these record, I'm gonna record specific things. Used in my iPod solely by itself, not having to worry about jumbling devices. I'm also thinking of doing video, um, of me just in an area. So if we go to Main Street USA, and my wife's gonna be in the shop. I'm just gonna record Main Street USA. Um, I'm gonna try to do something. I, so here's the, the idea. I either do stroll videos where it's very limited commentary, or the commentary that I put in is used to explain what you're seeing, what's going on. I thought of doing a main, Windows of Main Street USA video where I just show the windows of all the Imagineers and just all the people who have meant a lot to the Disney a character, uh, a growth, and um, a character. Uh, and there's the partner statue and the Roy Disney statues where I want to put them on video and acknowledge what they are and what they're there for. Uh, especially Roy, because I think the most underrated or uh, underappreciated person is Roy Disney in the Disney lexicon. They think of Walt Disney. Um, we have to remember who carried the torch for Walt, and we also have to remember who originated, who lit that torch. I think Walt Disney now is becoming a, a name brand, and it would be nice to change that. Um, I think I'll leave it at this. I don't know the question I'm going to pose. I'm going to do on my next episode. I don't know when it's going to be. I'm sorry. Um, what is the pre and post Disney blues? Until then, make a wish and do as dreamers do. And I will see you some other time.